So yesterday, Microsoft issued a statement on their blog site entitled Adapting Ahead of Regulation, a Principled Approach to App Stores. And it's an interesting blog post, not least because down the page, and we'll get to that in a minute, there appears to be a statement in which they say the Activision Blizzard games are going to be made available on the PlayStation even after existing deals cease. And as you might imagine, this caused a big hoo-ha on the internet and the Sony fanboys were getting all happy and jumping about and laughing and the Xbox fanboys were saying, you're not reading it right and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So you had the usual fanboy nonsense kicked off. But I think it's a lot more interesting than that. And as usual, I think the fanboys are missing a lot of the points. If we actually go down the page, you can see here I've highlighted some of it. But we'll start at the beginning and it says here, Today, we're announcing a new set of open app store principles that will apply to the Microsoft Store on Windows and to the next generation marketplaces we will build for games. And then it goes on. We have developed these principles in part to address Microsoft's growing role and responsibility as we start the process of seeking regulatory approval in capitals around the world for our acquisition of Activision Blizzard. And I think what they're trying to do here, straight away in this statement, is get ahead of the regulatory bodies. They're trying to state, look, we understand that this is going to put us in a, a much more powerful position, and we understand the responsibility we've got there, and we will work with the regulatory bodies to try and get this through, and we're not going to be the bad guy here. And uh, I think that's highlighted again when we move down the page, because they say, in part, this is because we've been adapting for two decades to antitrust rules. <laughs> and what you can read into that is that, in part, we've been <laughs> dealing with antitrust rules for two decades and falling foul of them because Microsoft haven't always had a good track record when it comes to dealing with regulatory bodies. And I think what they're trying to do here is show that actually they're prepared to work and it's going to be different this time. And... Uh, so that's kind of almost conciliatory. They're saying, we understand our history, but we, you know we're, we're prepared to work with you and we want to be doing this right. But then the next bit is really interesting <laughs> because they say this. And we believe it's possible for governments to adopt new tech regulation that promotes competition while also protecting fundamental values like privacy and national and cyber security. So while they're being conciliatory in the first part, or, you know, trying to say we're not going to be the bad guy in the first part, they're then firing a warning shot. I think this is definitely a warning shot. What they're saying is basically, someone's going to buy Activision Blizzard. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be us, Microsoft, an American corporation who's got a track record? Or is it going to be someone else? who might not be <laughs> what you want. It's it's basically saying, look, you know, th th there are problems with some of these other companies out there and we're the good guy. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure that Microsoft are the good guy, but from my personal position, I'd rather Microsoft were buying Activision Blizzard than maybe a company like Tencent. Whether Tencent could buy Activision Blizzard, I don't know. But... I do think Microsoft is stating that in, you know, in a roundabout way. They're not coming out and saying, well, you know, this company over here, you don't want them buying them. What they are saying is we are the better company for this. We're, we're interested in fundamental values like privacy, national and cybersecurity, whereas these other companies over there, they're not. So they're doing two things here, and they're putting these ideas in the head of the regulators. That's what I think's going on anyway, and, and you might disagree with me and correct me if you think I'm wrong. But then later on, they go down here and they say, our vision is to enable gamers to play any games on any device, anywhere, including by streaming from the cloud. So again, <laughs> they're saying that they want their games everywhere. And this, I don't think this is anything new. I think Microsoft have been saying this for some time. If you listen to what Phil Spencer has been saying, he wants games to be available everywhere. But there's something else to be read into this as well. Our vision is to enable gamers to play any game on any device anywhere, including by streaming from the cloud. And who's got a streaming from the cloud service? Yep, Microsoft. And what's that part of? Yep. Game Pass. So I think people are missing a point here because 
and I said this on Twitter, I think, people are looking at consoles and saying, oh, Microsoft are going to allow their games on PlayStation consoles and Nintendo consoles and any other platform as well. Yeah, they are. But Microsoft have got Game Pass. And that's where <laughs> we're going to see the exclusivity in the future. But I'll come to that a bit more in a minute. They go on to say here, our large investment to acquire Activision Blizzard further strengthens our resolve to remove friction on behalf of creators and gamers alike. Again, this fits in with everything Microsoft have said in the past. They want to have these games available across all platforms. And Phil Spencer said this. He said, you know, you don't get a CD and then have to worry about whether you can play it on a particular device. You just put it into your CD player and it plays. And look, I know CDs are old technology now, but his point still stands. He wants these games to be available across all platforms. And I'm sure Microsoft wants the, want these games to be available across all platforms. But, but, <laughs> they want to decide how you access them, to some degree at least. But anyway, let's go down to the, the big statement because there's a lot of detail here and I'm not going to go too much into all of this because there's a lot of stuff that I don't think necessarily applies to us as gamers. I think what we're interested in is where will we be playing these things? And it's this statement here and this is the one everyone's quoting. To be clear, Microsoft will continue to make Call of Duty and other popular Activision Blizzard titles available on PlayStation through the term of any existing agreement with Activision. And we have committed to Sony that we will also make them available on PlayStation beyond the existing agreement and into the future so that Sony fans can continue to enjoy the games they love. We are also interested in taking similar steps to support Nintendo's successful platform. We believe this is the right thing for the industry, for gamers and for our business. And as I say, the simple reading of this is that Microsoft are committed to putting these games on PlayStation in perpetuity and that they want to put these games on the Nintendo platform as well. But there's more, as I say, to pick out from this. If you start picking this apart, what Microsoft are going to do, in my view, is yeah, they will probably continue to make games like, well, not probably, they will continue to make games like Call of Duty available on the PlayStation. And if they can, they'll bring it to Nintendo Switch or whatever Nintendo will have down the line. I fully expect them to want to do that. But I'll come back to the elephant in the room again. Game Pass. Game Pass is where the exclusivity will be. I know I've said it before, but that's where it will be in the future. Sony, you can have Call of Duty on, on the Sony platform, whatever it might be, the PlayStation 5, 6, whatever, down the line. But you won't be able to get Call of Duty on PlayStation's competitor to Game Pass. You'll have to buy it on the PlayStation flat platform if you want it. This is the way I see it anyway. So at that point, you have the choice. You can buy the game for $60, $70 on the PlayStation, or you can subscribe to Game Pass and have it day one on Game Pass. That's where the exclusivity will be, in that area. Same for Nintendo. You'll probably be able to buy some of these games, the ones that will run, because obviously Nintendo's platform isn't particularly powerful, so some games won't run unless you stream them. You'll be able to buy them on, on that platform, but still, you'll be able to get them for a monthly fee on Game Pass. And any Game Pass competitors will be the area where <laughs> the competition will really be. Because consoles will become less and less and less important as time goes on. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's the truth of it. That's what's going to happen. And there's another string to this bow as well. Microsoft will be saying, well, you can have Game Pass. I'm sure Microsoft would put Game Pass on the PlayStation. And I'm sure they would put Game Pass on the Nintendo Switch as well. I mean, Nintendo are, are, are kind of dipping their toes into the waters of streaming. But would they take Game Pass? Would Sony take Game Pass? And this is the interesting thing here, because I think this also heads off the regulators. 
because Microsoft will quite happily say, well, Game Pass, we'll, we'll make Game Pass available everywhere. So we're not, you know, we're not monopolising. We're just being like Netflix or, or Amazon Prime Video or, or something like that. We'll make Game Pass available on every platform that wants it. And that will mean that these games aren't being restricted from people. So that will head off to some degree. Again, this is my opinion, but that will head off to some degree the regulators. I, I expect this deal will probably go through. Not least because of what Microsoft is saying here. I think they've been very smart in heading off some of this regulatory <laughs> scrutiny. And I think Microsoft are trying to head some of that off. And I think maybe successfully as well. And and then go if we go back to this thing about cybersecurity and stuff, I think that they're putting that idea in, in the heads of the regulators as well. Because, you know, who do you want buying these companies? Okay, you know, you may not want a big company like Microsoft buying them, but who else do you want buying them? Because someone's going to buy Activision Blizzard. They're for sale. Somebody's going to buy them. So who's it going to be? That's what Microsoft is saying. Who do you want buying these companies? So there's multiple things going on here. The future, though, and I think this tells us everything we need to know, you know, all the things that have been said over the past few months and even years, going back a couple of years, stuff that Phil Spencer said. The reality is that the future field of competition will be in services, not in platforms. That's where it's going. Sony recognised this because Sony are moving to create their own service that can compete. And other companies will be doing the same. And I don't know what, you know, I know <laughs> Google, who knows what Google are doing there. Their service is dead already, probably. And Stadia, I mean. And Luna, I don't know what's going to happen with Luna. But Amazon, Amazon, I mean, you know, Amazon could have come in maybe and bought Activision Blizzard. Who knows? But Microsoft is saying it's in good hands. And, and they say at the end here, in our view, this is all part of the future and we embrace it. Again, they're saying, look, you know, we know we've not necessarily had a, a good track record in the past. We're going to work with you. We're the good guys here. Who do you want buying this? And our platform's available to everyone if, if you want it. Our, our service, sorry, is available to everyone if they want it. And our games will be available on other platforms as well if they want those games. This is, this is a smart statement from Microsoft. And as I said before, I think a lot of the fanboys are missing the point. This isn't about console exclusivity at all. This is about services. This is about what Microsoft are going to be offering from now until the foreseeable future, excuse me. And as I say, it'd be interesting to see if this goes through. I, I personally think it probably will. I think people like Hoaglaw and people like that have, have stated the same. Uh, they know more about this stuff than I do, far more about this stuff than I do. But like I say, this is a smart statement and this will have been gone through very, very carefully by the lawyers and everybody involved at Microsoft to make sure they've, they've got the tone just right. And I think they have. I think it's, it's conciliatory, but it's also giving some sort of worry in the back of their minds about who else might buy Activision Blizzard if Microsoft aren't allowed to. And uh, I think it's says everything we need to know about the future of Microsoft and where they're heading. But anyway, look, I could be wrong as ever. And if I am, let me know in the comments and we can have a chat. But in the meantime, I'm going to go and grab myself a cup of tea. I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye.